Hi, my name's Isaac, and this is my 2019 Toyota Tacoma. And today, I'd like to go over some of the pros and cons of the truck, now that I've owned it for a little over two months now. Before we get started, I want to thank you guys so much. My previous review of the Tacoma, that I just did an overview on it, has almost 10,000 views. That blows my mind. I never thought I'd nearly get anywhere close to 10,000 views on that video. So it, at this point, it may be past that. I just want to thank you guys so much for your support, the likes, all the comments. I loved reading all the comments. There was a lot of positives and negatives even in those comments. Uh, and I, I know not everybody loves the Tacoma. Uh, and that's totally okay. I Like I said, when I was looking for this truck, I looked at everything. And I love pickup trucks in general, so I am by no means partial just to the Toyota brand. Uh, that's just what I ended up settling on, and I want to tell you guys why I settled on it. But I look forward to hopefully someday being able to review other trucks, because I love all, all trucks. And I'm so thankful for that. those view counts, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate that. So I figured the next best thing for me to do would be a top pros and cons video. Uh, I have five of each. I might do six or seven of a couple just because as I look at the truck, as I go through the truck, there's a lot of stuff that I do like on it. And then there is cons. There's a lot of cons that I found on this truck. Not truck ruining cons that I, that I hate my truck now and I want to trade it in. Uh, but there is stuff that's kind of annoyed me and kind of ticked me off a little bit. And I want to share those because now that I've owned it for a while and I'm kind of getting into dri daily driving this truck, I want you guys to know my perspective. So if you guys decide to purchase uh, a Tacoma that you know down the road daily driving, kind of what I've experienced with it, that's so awesome if I can help you in your buying experience. So I, I don't want to be 100% positive. I want to show you the downsides of this truck. Some of them are a little silly. Some of them are just stupid and me being nitpicky. But then some of them I think are sort of legitimate concerns for a vehicle in 2019 or just a pickup truck in general. So let's get started with the pros and then we'll get to the cons because if I start with the cons, everyone will stop watching halfway through because I know you're all here for the cons. So, so <laughs> let's start with the pros. All right, so now up to my first pro of the truck. <sighs> Gotta commit to the bit. So the truck has 9.4 inches of ground clearance, making it best in class for the mid-sized pickup trucks. Most of the other ones have between 8.4 and 8.9 inches of ground clearance. So that extra little bit of ground clearance might not sound like a lot, but if you're going mudding or driving through heavy snow, it could really come in handy to have that extra ground clearance on this truck. Now obviously I lose a little bit because I have these factory installed running boards, but it's still cool to know that the Tacoma has the best ground clearance. Now I did touch upon this in my previous review of the Tacoma, but it is worth noting that every single model of the Tacoma, including the base SR, comes with a touch screen as well as steering wheel controls for volume up and down and switching channels, as well as Toyota Safety Sense Pre-Collision, which is their camera system and safety. None of the other vehicles come with that standard on all the models, including the base. That's one of the great things about the Toyota. While I'm up in the cab, I think I'm going to address one of the issues, one of the comments I received on the truck too. It said that kind of the interior was trash and that the materials were garbage. And I'd really like to dispel that by showing you guys here some of the material quality. Now, it's not all perfect, but I want to be honest with you guys. This is one of my pros too, is the material and build quality. If we start on the door panel, uh, this door panel right here is a soft touch <clears throat> kind of uh, rubbery material. It's texture. I don't really know how to describe it, but it's very soft. And you're going to be laying your arm here most of the time. Uh, this front part is a hard touch plastic down here, hard touch plastic uh, for the rest of the door. And then we have this kind of faux aluminum trim here. Uh, that's a plastic. Top of the dash is hard touch, but the steering wheel is leather wrapped on all the trims SR5 and above. If we move over, the seats are uh, uh, not leather. You can get leather on these. These are cloth seats. Uh, I really like them. They have good lumbar support. Um, obviously, biggest complaint with these is there is only manual adjustments and then there's no power up and down. That's coming on the 2020. I am 5'9". I test drove two or three of these. 
I liked the seating position. I was okay with it. Obviously, I would like to sit a little bit higher, maybe sometimes a little bit lower, um, but that was not a deal breaker for me. That is for a lot of people, so we could throw that in as a quick con, um, but that is going to be changed on the model uh, in September. So if you're looking within the next couple of months, the, the 2020 September models will have adjustable on the SR5 and above. So be on the lookout for that, but that is changing. Also, the uh, if we go back to materials, uh, this is uh, a leather, uh, I don't know if it's a real leather material, it is uh, definitely soft touch, um, this glove box, and then the gear shift uh, lever, which uh, I like because it is a traditional one, that is also leather wrapped, that has a little leather uh, like pouch thing around it at the bottom, very nice, kind of luxury. Um, this is a soft touch plastic, with more leather wrapping. I think this is like kind of like a, this has wrapped with something. It's very nice. Um, you got faux aluminum on the steering wheel here and uh, the, the faux aluminum trim goes all the way around and then your glove box is hard touch plastic. But the door on the other side is also, sorry my video cut out there. I was basically just saying that that door panel had the same trim as the other ones and that extends to the back as well on both the doors. Same cloth seating, very nice materials. Yes, obviously some hard touch plastics, but I think all in all, Toyota did a good job incorporating them here. So that's a little overview of the interior and one of the other positives. Lastly in pros, I wanna to touch on um, a couple of things. Number one, I really like how it drives. It drives very smooth in my opinion. It really eats up the road, especially potholes and stuff. Really the suspensions to thank for that. And I really like, it's a very quiet cabin. I was taking some kids somewhere for a vacation Bible school uh, the other day and this like eight year old kid said, it's very quiet in the cabin here. And I was like, oh my gosh, this kid's adorable. Yes, it's a very quiet cabin, uh, which I really like especially coming from a small Hyundai Accent as my previous vehicle. A lot of wind noise in that vehicle because they really, I don't think, uh, cared too much about putting wind reduction stuff in there. Uh, so very quiet cab, very smooth ride, eats up potholes, really like that. And I'm sure all the other midsize trucks really do that as well, but I'm just noting that, that this, this one does have that. Lastly, I am sitting back here because I want to give you guys an update on the bed and how it is held up on this composite bed liner. I know I said in my last video, it remains to be seen how that will hold up. I do a lot of hauling of materials. I've hauled a ton of, let me see, let's start. I've done lots of suitcases, loose mulch, loose topsoil. I've actually taken this to max payload capacity in mulch. It was insane. I will never do that again. I got it really close. I was doing a, a landscaping job, somebody, and I, and I packed it like this high. I would not recommend, my suspension was like this high off the ground, really don't recommend that. I've done logs, I've just carried a bunch of logs that chops, helps to help chop some trees down and, and then cut up the logs. One of the great things is it's allowed me to be a huge blessing to people by uh, helping them move things if they need it. If I have a pickup truck, I figure I might as well, might as well use it for a pickup truck. And this bed has been awesome, so that is one thing I can highly recommend and, and one super pro of the Tacoma. Ah, now for the moment you've all been waiting for, the cons of the truck. Let's start with the petty one. I hate these chrome bumpers. On the SR5 trim, the SR, and if I'm not mistaken, the TRD off-road, they include these chrome bumpers, which sort of have a cool purpose. They're separated, so if anything happens to them, they can get taken off, uh, and you only have to replace one bumper. The problem is, uh, it's, they're, since they're chrome, they're super hard to paint body color. And so they're very expensive to either get replaced or painted. And it usually costs five to $600 to get these things painted, which I think is ridiculous in my opinion. I don't $500 care about these bumpers. I more like $150 care about these bumpers. Like I'd like to get them body colored, but I'm not paying 500 bucks. My next point may seem petty to a lot of you, but for pickup truck drivers, this is annoying if you don't have this. You know what this is right here? This is a beautiful grab handle. This is a wonderful grab handle. I could shake the whole truck with this grab handle. It's so wonderful to have. In fact, I could step up on the running board and hold on to it, almost like a garbage man. It's kind of cute. Do you know what the driver's side of this truck doesn't have? If you guessed its own portable coffee maker, 
You'd be correct. It doesn't have that. It also doesn't have a driver's side grab handle, which is really weird, kind of annoying to me, because if you have it on the other side, why not just flip it and put it on this side? The previous generation of the Tacoma did have the grab handle on the driver's side, as well as the previous generation of other mid-sized pickup trucks like the Ford Ranger. Now it's absent on the current one. I can't find anywhere that details that you're not allowed to have a grab handle on this side because the new F-150s have it, the Ram 1500s have it, and the higher F F-250s and the uh, Silverado heavy duties have it. Uh, curiously, uh, the Chevy Silverado 1500 actually has gone away with it, as well as the Nissan Frontier, which has been out for 15 years, as I mentioned. The weird thing is, the older years of it had the grab handle on this side, but at some point they took it away in the most couple recent years, the most recent couple of years, there we go, of the uh, Nissan Frontier truck. So everywhere I'm finding on message boards, people wish that there was a grab handle here. Now I understand this is a short truck. I mean, I'm 5'9 and I'm as tall as the truck is practically, but because there's that nine and a half inch ground clearance, it would be nice to have that grab handle there to get in the truck because it sits so high. Now, obviously you have the steering wheel, but I think the grab handle kind of would have been nice since they're doing away with it in all these midsize and even some full-size trucks. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for, the number one most complained about thing on the Toyota Tacoma, from message boards to professional review sites, even my own comment section. <clears throat> The 2019 Toyota Tacoma still uses rear drum brakes. Hear me out for a second here. I understand that it's a con for most people and that the industry is traditionally switching towards disc brakes. In fact, the front of the end of the Tacoma has disc brakes. I don't understand why they don't switch to disc brakes on the back, but for some reason, Toyota's sticking with the drums. I don't know if it's cheaper production costs or they are better from my it, looking into it it seems like from my end that disc brakes are the way to go um but i stop every day i hit the brakes every single day on my truck when i drive it and it stops i understand the disc brakes stop faster but the drum brakes stop fine for my truck just figured i'd get my two cents on the rear drum brake issue, so now the comment section can just be even more ticked off at me. Sorry guys, I mean I hope that eventually they do switch to it, but it's not something that bugs me in my day to day with the truck. My last and biggest complaint about my Toyota Tacoma is the fuel economy. I have the 3.5 liter V6, this also comes in I believe it's a 2.4 liter 4 cylinder. Um, don't quote me on that, I'll, I'll throw it up here if I am wrong, but EPA estimates for my truck are 18 CD 22 highway. I get about 17 combined. I do more city driving, but I also do a decent amount of highway driving. 17, not bad. I feel like for a mid-sized pickup truck, this could be a lot better. The full-size F-150 pickup truck gets around 22 miles per gallon combined. I have some co-workers that have it. Uh, I've talked to a couple different people. They usually average about 22, which is crazy. From my research talking to people, I found that what I could see online is that the EPA wants full-size trucks to get better fuel economy, and there hasn't been a crackdown on mid-size trucks yet. And so mid-size trucks kind of just let their engines go and don't really try to compete for great fuel economy. I think it's decent. In my state, usually the max I have to pay at the pump is about $60. Not great, not terrible. I know people that usually have to pay a lot more at the pump for the full-size trucks and other mid-size trucks, but I just feel like it's really ridiculous that a mid-size truck is only getting 17 combined, and I don't really aggressively drive. I, I drive uh, like a normal person, and so, I think that the fuel economy should be better. And you say, Isaac, you have the V6 model. Why don't you get the four-cylinder model? Why didn't you get the four-cylinder model? The four-cylinder is only rated for 19 city, 22 highway, which means it's only one mile per gallon better than the six-cylinder. So obviously, you'd want to go for the V6. The, the issue is they don't, care about fine-tuning their engines, it seems, to get better fuel economy.
because the four cylinder on a pickup truck, small mid-sized pickup truck, should be like 25 combined, but it's not. And that's my biggest complaint about this truck. Love everything else about it, except for the things that I don't love that I mentioned. But I really, really feel like Toyota needs to address the fuel economy on this truck. And so those were my pros and cons of my 2019 Toyota Tacoma pickup truck. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are in the comments. I'd love to know if you have a Tacoma and what your pros and cons are. If you think I missed something, which I'm sure you'll catch me on and I'm sure you'll tell me about in the comments, feel free to tell me about that. But this is just from my perspective. Some of the stuff that I found on my truck that I disliked, some of the stuff that I feel like Toyota needs to change, and some of the stuff that Toyota's done for the better. And so uh, I hope this video is really informative and insightful. Please like the video, that would be awesome. Most importantly, if you could subscribe, that would be awesome. Uh, I guess there's a bell notification you can hit or something. Uh, I'm really trying to grow my audience so I can review more than just my pickup truck. I'd really like to branch out and review other pickup trucks. I'm gonna see if I can compare this to a Ford Ranger and review them side by side. That would be awesome. I know you guys would love that. I'd love to be able to do that. I'd really like to review a Jeep Gladiator and see if that is as cool of a new midsize truck as it, as it looks in their advertisements. And I'd really like to delve into maybe the Chevy Colorado or a full-size truck. The new 2019 Ram or the new 2019 Silverado could be awesome. But before I could like contact dealerships to like ask them, I want to show them that I have an audience that wants to watch these videos. So if you guys could leave a comment, watch, just watch the video would be awesome and subscribe, that would be incredible. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Catch you in the next video.